And everybody knows it. Hollywood rolls out its blockbusters every summer, and video game companies are never far behind with a quick game to cash in on the franchise. Now, most of the time, they're panned by critics and gamers alike, so why do they keep happening? Another summer means another slew of blockbuster movies hitting the local theaters. And with the frenzy of films comes a new group of video games based on them. Summer is not traditionally known for great video game releases, especially when they're based on movies. <laughs> However, there are exceptions like The Chronicles of Riddick and Scarface, which lead most gamers to hope that their favorite films can be translated into a quality game. Unfortunately, the majority of movie licensed games seem like messy products glued together just to coincide with their big screen counterparts. Smooth enough. This is so lame. Is there any hope for games based on movies, or will they forever be a rushed product with a license slapped on? Oh my gosh, this is so pathetic. The exits are located at the front and the rear of the auditorium. This is so lame. It's the loop. All right, my guest tonight, editor for Electronic Gaming Monthly, Shane Bettenhausen is here, and executive producer of the Vinny Universal's Riddick and Scarface games, Pete Wannett is here. Pete, you loved Shrek the Third for the 360, though. I just want to get that out, right? You see, you were ranting and raving, correct? Absolutely. You know, it's all for the achievements. Okay, good. Shane, let's start yes. with you, sir. Is it just some weird misconception, or do these movie games really suck that badly? They really do, and it's not a new thing. I mean, E.T. came out for 2600, like, over 20 years ago, and that started the sucking, and they've been sucking ever since. So, so E.T. was the suckage trendsetter, you're saying? It was, and, like, yeah, they still suck. The majority of these games are totally sucky, and people still buy them, as you said, and, but maybe that'll change, hopefully. Yeah, Pete's, Pete, what's going on? I mean, this has been happening for years now. I mean, why, what makes these games so terrible? Well, I mean, I think it's everybody shares some of the blame. I think uh, you have the Hollywood studios, you have publishers, you have developers. Everybody tries to do it on a rush schedule. Uh, you know, there's a lot of license slapping going on. It happens. I mean, especially when there's a lot of money to be made. Uh, when you have that much money to be made over the summer big Hollywood blockbuster season, you know, you're going to have a lot of mo uh, movie-based games that have license slapped on top of them. I think. Well, now, does the license itself hurt the game when it gets slapped on, or would these games suck without the time? I think, you know, these games would suck regardless. I mean, if you try to do a game in a very short time frame to capitalize on a, you know, a big movie, uh, oftentimes those games are going to pay the price for it. And what really hurts is when you have games based on movies where, you know, the developer and the publisher and the studio all put in the amount of time needed to create a great game. Uh, if everybody got, you know, Valve or Blizzard or bungee time periods and money and budgets to make right. games, movie-based games would be as good as, you know, any of those games. So, Shane, why are people buying these things when we know we, we, the precedent has been set for years? Why are gamers still going out there and supporting these, these titles? Well, I mean, the marketing machine is in place, and they, they get advertised very heavily. And, you know, the people like Spider-Man, they like Pirates, they think, oh, I'm going to like the game. But the truth is, these games are made really quickly by developers that usually aren't the best developers, and they also come out across all these platforms. So you get the same game ported across multiple systems, and they don't take advantage of what's good about a system. Right. And now, to Pete's credit, he has churned out some of the best, I think, movie games out there. But let's point some fingers, Pete. Let's burn some bridges, all right? <laughs> I don't want you to ever get another game. You, you, you briefly kind of brushed over it, but who's really to blame for the mediocrity here? Is it, is it big-time Hollywood studios? Is it the publisher? or is it the actual developer of the game? I mean, I think, like I said before, it really is, you know, all three share in the responsibility. It's, you know, you, if you want to make a great game, you need the proper amount of time to make that game, and you need a real budget. Uh, oftentimes, what really hurts movie-based games are you end up paying so much for the licensing fee of the movie. Uh, you know, if you want to do a, a movie based on Pirates of the Caribbean, it's going to cost you a ton to get that license and therefore the game may suffer um, you know i'm not saying that's the case for pirates but on a lot of these movie based games that's what happens you spend so much the publisher spends so much money on the license there's not enough left over to go into the quality of the game so when i look at a game like like scarface or i look at a game like riddick what am i seeing done right like what hurdles did you guys actually leap what pitfalls were avoided here well i mean i think the shane brings up a good point if you if you work with quality developers whether it's you know uh whether it's Starbreeze well, so like, or, or like uh, the Radical, Warriors, R R then you're going to have a quality-based yeah. game. Uh, if you work with lesser developers, they're going to have you know you're going to suffer that fate. And now, Shane, you were you were bringing up the the Warriors there. Right. I think, I think the Warriors and Scarface and the Godfather, those are examples where the developers obviously liked the project. They had a lot of time to work on it. They weren't working with the deadline that this game has to be out day and date with the film. That's the big problem. You know, those games are so rushed, and they're just not finished. And, and that's right. why you play these games. They just don't seem good. 
Well, now, over, over half of the next-gen titles coming out this summer are movie-based games, and the quality so far seems to be on par with that of the previous generation. So, so Shane, when I'm looking at these titles coming out, some cost, you know, 60, 70 bucks a pop. Aren't players going to start demanding more, and are we going to finally see a backlash against these types of games? I hope so, and it is starting. Spider-Man 3, it had softer-than-expected sales, and, like, negative reviews, bad word of mouth, obviously had, a, had a, played a part in that. But, like, as you say, these games, like, for example, Surf's Up that just came out, that's on an Unreal 2 engine, whereas you're used to seeing Unreal 3 games on PS3 and 360. And, you know, those old games, they're, like, they're kind of ruining the next-gen consoles because they make your new $500 console seem, like, you know, underpowered. And I think it's a big problem. If I could get the Game Gear 3 Ninjas game on the virtual console, though, I'd still buy it. Am I part of the problem as well? <laughs> Yeah, you probably are. Okay. All right. Now, Pete, you know, because you, you've been on the development side of things and, and you've seen what can happen, I mean, should, should we as gamers cut some of these companies slack when they're forced to, to do a movie tie-in game, or should we hold them to the same standards as any other, other, other developer? Well, I mean, I think gamers should hold them to the same standards. I think, you know, when it comes to critical reviews, oftentimes I think the press needs to look at, you know, how, how long the game was in development for and take it to task, you know, not slam the game itself, but take the, you know, actual process to task. Uh, as much as the game itself. All right, Pete, do you see it getting better? Do you, do you see the studios understanding that they need more lead time and more money? Yeah, I think, I, I think the, what you see now is a case where Hollywood executives, they start, they're, they're playing games now. And, you know, there are people who work in the, in the game industry, like Bill Kispert over at Universal, who, you know, he goes home every night and plays games. He, he knows the quality. And so if a game, you know, if you look at the, the games that Universal has done, even, you know, not the ones that we've done with them, but like even King Kong, you've seen some of the more successful games come from people who actually really play games. And that's the, that's the most important thing. If you want the quality of the games to go up, you have to have people working at the studios who know right. games. All right, Shane, I want to give you the final word, sir. What would actually make the best movie-based video game? Let's pie in the sky here. I've always wanted to see a Logan's Run game. I think that that's a really cool movie that no one's ever tapped. And kind of like with Scarface or The Warriors, if the right people you know, found a license from the 70s like that and really did it right, I think you could reach a whole new audience with a game like that. I, I got to tap Pete's brain as well. Pete, what do you think? <laughs> best, yeah. best movie game? Come on. I, I really would like to see like, uh, Escape from New York done uh, you know, open world gameplay, uh, post-apocalyptic Manhattan. Uh, I think somebody you know, I think has that... that I think someone has that license, Pete. I don't know. I think it's out there. A lot. Made. They beat me to it, so yeah. that's all right. Hopefully it has a Wiimote controls and a bunch of <laughs> achievements and a whole bunch of other crap that doesn't actually enhance the gameplay. I, I really hope so. Uh, thanks to my guests, Shane and Pete, for joining us and keeping us in the loop. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.